Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked to me in the comment section of one of my videos. And unfortunately, due to YouTube just randomly deleting links, I don't know why it's doing that, just leave me the name of the design in the description below rather than the link, because otherwise it will just randomly get deleted, and I'm not sure why. But for today, what we're looking at is a gigantic and very impressive ship. We are looking at the CFG-91 CTPV Potbelly Cluster Torpedo Printer, which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a large block destroyer that has a bunch of guns on here, custom turrets, vanilla turrets, and deployable, controllable cluster torpedoes that we can print out and then deploy and send on their way. We also have one hell of a lot of room on the inside here, which I will apologize now that I might miss a few rooms out, because during my test, it was practically a maze to try and find everything. But anyway, pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the pot belly is 4,563 large blocks using practically all the DLC pack items. We've got no mods, but we do have quite a few scripts on here to make it all work, and we've got one hell of a lot of detail on the Steam Workshop page explaining absolutely everything. So we'll give this a thumbs up, we'll move all the way around to the very front, we'll have a quick look around the outside, then we'll go for a walk around the interior, try out the torpedoes, and then see how it handles. So at the very front here, this is what we get. Front and centre, we've got our little bridge here where we can fly it around with our flight seat, and we've got a couple of control seats for your co-pilots to take control over different things. Just above that, we've got an interior turret just to help out with some defence, and just below it, we've got ourselves a connector on a piston that we can deploy out in case we need to get a bit closer to a station, but don't want to risk our thrusters destroying any blocks. we also got some spotlights to light up the darkness, and surrounding it, we've got a bunch of hydrogen thrusters to make sure we can stop in a reasonable amount of time. Hydrogen thrusters are the only form of thrust that appear on the ship, so we are good for both planets and space, and we'll see one hell of a lot of them as we continue around to the back. But as we move around the side here, what we can see is a couple more turrets, and we'll see even more hydrogen thrusters and one hell of a lot of detail that has put lots of the new blocks to very good use. So coming around to the side here, we'll see some digital camouflage blocks, our armoured plates, we can see some of the girder blocks, which I always forget what they're actually called. Here they are, they're the beam blocks. Yes, there's quite a lot of beam blocks going across this ship. We can see a walkway going along the top, even more hydrogen thrusters, a couple of ways to peer inside with a couple more interior turrets. Then we get to the very back on the side, we've got some lovely spikes. Now continue all the way around towards the very back where we'll see our main thrusters to push this thing around, which is going to be five large hydrogen thrusters. And we can see two decoys at the very, very back to make sure that your precious thrusters don't get targeted straight away. We'll get a bit closer, and these are our thrusters and how they're all being covered up. And we can see two antenna there to make sure we can always find this thing. If you were to move all the way up and above first of all before we go underneath it, I'll leave my light on for the moment. We can see some more great use of our beam blocks, even more hydrogen thrusters, even more turrets, plenty of walkways to get around this thing. And as we continue around towards the front here, what we're going to see on the left and right is some custom turrets. So all the way over to here, this is our custom controlled rocket turret. We will take control of it from a control seat on the inside. We can view the camera, we can extend out our reticle, and we can then fire the rocket launchers as we please. We've got full mouse control so we can move it up, down, left and right and it is very destructive to whatever it hits. If we were to come towards the middle, this is our third custom turret, which instead of rockets, is going to be Gatling guns. Basically the same setup, but we've got 12 Gatling guns to blast your enemies with. We just pull out of there and start to look down once again. There's the other rocket turret on the opposite side. We do have a landing pad on the right hand side, which is very nice for a small ship to come and dock up and maybe deploy off a few more soldiers, or maybe for you to deploy a small exploration ship, maybe go across to a trader and see what they've got, instead of putting up the large ship. But moving all the way towards the very front, we see even more walkways, even more antenna. There is one hell of a lot on here. If I was just to bring up the HUD and do this, there is quite a lot of signals coming off this ship, so you're never going to lose it. Anyway, there I am at the very front. We'll turn around, come all the way down and underneath, pass our spotlights, pass a few more turrets, 
and we'll see some landing gear. The landing gear have got some pistons attached onto them to deploy all the way down to the ground, so they're nice and neatly tucked away when you're flying around in space. If we get a bit closer over to this side, what we'll see is a elevator system to make sure that you can get to the ship from the ground without needing your jetpack. If we were to come all the way over to here, this is what we get. We've got a lovely button that we can press and it will drop all the way down to the ground, allow you to get onto it. Then after a short delay, thanks to a timer block, it will raise all the way up and allow you to get through that door. It's a very nice system. I will take a look at that when we go around on foot. Then we'll just pull away like so and continue to move along over to this section. Now this is our torpedo bay hangar. Behind this, we got our printable torpedoes that once we've built and got it all prepped and ready to go, we can open this up via this little crack right here. This will just fold all the way open and will allow you to get your torpedoes out and you can remote control them and get some precise damage done with them. It's a very nice stuff. It is a little bit dangerous to look at, but after testing it a couple of times, it does seem quite safe. Anyway, moving along towards the back there, we've got another landing gear, an auction farm, even more turrets, even more hydrogen thrusters, a laser antenna, just in case, and some nice use of the letter blocks, adding a bit more detail. And then all the way towards the very back there, there's our rear hydrogen thrusters. And that is a very brief look around the outside of the 91 CTPV Pop Valley Cluster Torpedo Printer. And that is quite a mouthful to say when you're trying to pan the camera. So what we can do now is grab hold of my character and this is where it's going to get very complicated. So we've got a few ways of where we can go. We've got a few doorways at the front where we've got a little walkway around the side here and we've got a few ways where we can go around the back. Some of them seem like trap doors as in you'll just drop through as in you'll go through the door and you'll just drop down quite a substantial amount. But I think what we'll do is come all the way down to the very bottom and find our elevator and we'll go in through here. So coming across to the button panel, what we need to do is, so we want the lift to go downwards and to deploy all the way to the ground. We'd be able to get into it through this section right here. So once it stops, we're just going to hop into it like so. Now I'm going to turn off my jetpack and we simply have to wait. After a short delay, it will start to raise up and we'll get through through that little doorway. And here we are. We are now raising up nice and slowly. It took a little bit of time to go through and... Here we are, we now walk on the inside where we're instantly greeted by our fancy passages with the lights on the bottom. Looking up, we can see all the gubbins on the inside, our conveyors, some steps to go up to another doorway up there. We've got a doorway that just randomly opened for us. And we can see here that we've got a button to use the elevator where we can press it and it'll prep the elevator to go all the way down to the ground and then return back to the ship. Turning all the way around, we then got some steps to move up. We come across onto here and move around and go further into the ship. Now over to this section, this is our cluster torpedo printer. We don't have to use it from this section right here. We can use it from a chair, which is just all the way down there. Yes, we've got a button panel. We can press this big red button and that is going to start the process. So that's going to come all the way down. We're going to get a project block, project everything going on with it. And then after a short delay, the welders will start up and weld everything together. And then once it's all done, we can then press the buttons to disconnect the merge blocks and now they're prepped to be launched. So there we are, they're now all ready. We can come across to our button panel once again. We can press these two, which are to disable the merge blocks. And like I said, they're now ready to go. We'll turn to these a bit later. Just looking around the room, we do have a little pokey area right there where a sneaky person could try and snipe you from. But for the rest of the room, that's all we get. So it's time to continue to walk around. Coming all the way down to here, we can get a better look at our cluster torpedoes, which are made out of a bunch of iron thrusters, warheads, and of course, everything you need to remote control it. There's our welding systems. Yes, we can just continue around through this doorway, or we can open it up, continue along. We've got a split in the path where we've got an air vent right here to make sure we've got a nice lot of oxygen. Above us, we've got a jump drive. And then continue along to here. We then got more stairs to go up. Turning around, we've got our torpedo bay and elevator, which is where we just came from. So now we're getting further and further into the ship and this is where it's going to start to get a bit more complicated because <laughs> we've got a doorway there, a doorway there and we've got some more ways to go up. So what we'll do for the moment is come through this doorway and hopefully not get lost. So walking around we then got even more doorways to go through. Opening up this one we're going to come to a small little maintenance area where we can come up a ladder and we'll be able to walk all the way around to here where we've got a conveyor point right there 
and we continue to walk all the way around and up to here. We can then access our gyroscopes if we need to manually do that. And we can see some glass panels above us. And that's that for this section. It's like a little hidey hole or a maintenance area, like I said just a second ago. Coming all the way back around to where I just was. I believe we came from down here. There we are. We now open up this doorway and continue all the way around and into this doorway. Moving around over to this, we can look down and there is a little area below us where we can go. And we'll just continue along through here and walking all the way around. And yes, I did warn you that it's going to get complicated, but luckily we are now at a dead end. So we can see some areas around us. There is our landing gear. There's our Gatling turret. And we can walk all the way around up these steps to access more areas to do a bit more maintenance work. We'll come back through here, we'll start sprinting all the way through, back to where we were, opening up that. And I believe we came through there, yes I think we did. So we just come back through here, back to the junction where our torpedo bay was. Opening up this doorway, coming through we're going to head down and hopefully this will be to the place that I was thinking. And it will be the control bay area. Yes it is, the remote control room, because this is how we're going to fly our torpedoes. Opening up the door and looking to our left, we then got a encouragement turret to make sure no naughty person can get through here. And on the opposite side, we then got our security guard area where they can just sit there and make sure that you are permitted to enter this area. Opening up the doorway, we're greeted by a bunch of control seats that largely do the same thing. So we just come all the way over to this seat in the corner. So in this seat, we got some controls for our merge blocks, which is going to be to control the detach system. So just turning them on, they are now attached. And then detaching them, they're ready to go. If you were to mouse over number 9, this is going to be our trigger, which is how we're going to rebuild the torpedoes once they've been launched. And finding the correct seat, which I think is this one. Yes, it is. This is the one to open and close the hangar bay doors. We'll move the camera all the way down and underneath so you can see how dodgy this is to open up. Pressing number 8. There we go. That's now going to open up and allow your torpedoes clear access to the world. So once you've done this, all you have to do is press I, come into the remote access and find one of the torpedoes. There's simply going to be this small grid you see right here. Take control of it. We can now find the camera if you wanted to. We can start to move it around. There we go, now got some control of it. And start to fly this thing around. It's a bit hard to do in third person. Oh, this is quite dodgy because there is warheads on here. Yes, we can use our camera which is built into the torpedo to fly this thing around. And if we were to try and find the free camera once again, Come all the way over to it. That is what it looks like in all of its glory. And we can then just go and arm the torpedoes. Arm the warheads even. And once you get close enough to an enemy. Detonate it. And well hopefully you will do a nice lot of damage. And that is that for the torpedoes. And of course just for safety reasons. Let's go and get rid of this one. Now take control of that. We can fly it away. Arm the torpedoes. We want to blow up that. And kaboom. There it goes. So it's a very nice little system and it's very easy to build. We just come into here for one final thing and press number 9 and we'll start to rebuild it once again. So there it goes, it's a very nice little system. And once it's all done, we can then just undo the merge blocks and send them on their way once again. Coming out of that and walking all the way around over to here, we then got another little walkway. Which is going to lead us over to our security guard area where we can sit down and do our work. And over here we then got a button panel. Which is going to be for these security doors to open and close and turn them on and off. I mean, all the way around and up to these steps, we then got a couple more doorways to go through. So around there we can then look down at all your people doing their work, give them some orders, tell them they're doing a fantastic job or doing a terrible job, whatever you want to do. Yes, we can just come through this doorway and that'll lead us to a small armory locker where we can just load up on a few bits and bobs if we need to. If you were to move down, come through this doorway back to the junction that we just were in, which I believe is up here all the way around. And here we are. We can start to move up once again. Another encouragement turret and another split in the path. So in this area right here, the frame rate is going to start tanking quite considerably due to all the lights going through all the blocks. We've got a bunch of cargo containers along the side to store a few bits and bobs in. Some more turrets for encouragement. We can see our jump drives are right below us. And along the wall here, a bunch of programmable blocks, which are going to be for controlling the turrets, the automatic LCD screens, and of course all the scripts that the ship needs to function. So just walk all the way around to over here, where there's a few more programmable blocks. There's for our right rocket turret, and there is for our multi-gatling turret that sits in the middle. Walking all the way around to over here, we can then peer down at where we just were. And walking all the way 
So in this section, we've got a doorway to go up, or you can just move up to the next floor. On the next floor, we've got a couple more batteries, some more cargo containers, and a lovely spotlight to light up the area, and another doorway to go through. But for the moment, we'll just come back down to this and come through the doorway that I just saw. Where has it gone? How'd you lose a doorway? Here it is. It was just right here behind this catwalk. But coming through this, now get into a very shiny catwalk area. And once again, a few more ways to go. Walking in this direction, we've got a window to peer down at our torpedo bay. Opening up this doorway, then got a double door. And <laughs> even more places to go. Coming through this doorway, this will lead us down to a section where we can peer down at our torpedo bay and get them all prepped and ready to go. But with another button panel to control everything. Open the bay doors, we can close them, whatever we want to do. So there's a bunch of orange flashing lights now close up. And well, we can just come back through here and continue on our way. Opening up this doorway and moving all the way down, this is going to bring us to the front of the ship where we can finally control the ship and see what it has to offer. But now everybody remember where this was, so we need to do a bit of backtracking. So opening up this doorway, coming through this section, and I'll come back through this area where we can open up this doorway. That is where we just were. Opening up this one, we then come to a security area. We've then got a bunch of seats that control the interior turrets throughout the ship. So just hopping into this one randomly, we now control one of the turrets on the inside. Now flip over to this turret, and well, just make sure everybody is behaving and not doing anything sinister. Moving around to here, we then got our auto door closer script to make sure all the doors close up behind you. Walking around to this section, even more seats, another radar script, another doorway to come through and well get lost in. We then got an area which I presume is going to be like little fake beds to go to sleep on. And a access panel for whatever you need. Opening up this doorway, we we'll then come through to another split in the path where we can drop down to here. Come through another doorway and that's going to lead us even further into the ship and like I said, it's going to get very easy to get turned around in here. But no, this doorway is going to lead to the outside. We've got a couple of cover walls just in case you need to do some manual firing against enemy drones. And around to here, a few bits and bobs to get a bit of cover. And yes, we're now on the outside. We can walk up these catwalks and do whatever the hell you please. So looking in here, this is another little doorway. Walking all the way around, we come up and above and do some maintenance work on our custom turrets if you please. But I feel we should go back inside the ship because there's still a few more areas to go through. Opening up the doorway, coming back through into this section. We can then climb all the way up. We can go further down if you want to. So we can go through to here, but it's just going to be to repair up any blocks that get damaged. Say by anything that can penetrate through multiple blocks, like a rail gun or whatever kind of modded weaponry you want. Walking around to here, coming down the steps, opening up the doorway, coming through a few more catwalks. We then got some more doorways. This is going to be for our landing gear to get it all the way down to the ground and a emergency escape point. And all the way over to here we've got another little walkway across some hydrogen tanks that then lead us over to some more large hydrogen tanks. Unlike the other area, this is just for repairing stuff up if it took damage. Coming back through here and back to wherever the hell I was, I think it was around here, up these ladders. There we go. And I think we came through here, did we? I'm not sure anymore. Yes, I think it was through here. We now come to here. Where we've got another maintenance access room. No air beyond there, so that's been clearly labelled. And we've got another doorway. We can move all the way up and into some more intersections. Turning around, this is our gravity and assembly room, security room, and medical bay is that way and that way. And our flight deck is behind us. Walking around this section, we're then going to come to a assembler for manual access and the access to our gravity generator. Moving around to this section, this should be to our medical bay, which is down these steps. Open that up, open this door, and we've got a bunch of cryopods and air vent to make sure we don't suffocate. There is our medical bay block, some lockers around the room, and a cargo access just in case you need it. And once again, a split in the path. Opening up this doorway, that's going to lead us down to another programmable block. And well, you guess it, another split in the path. I believe we have been through this section beforehand. I think we just came through it and I forgot to go up that little doorway. This should lead us over to the hangar bay once again for our torpedo launchers. And I do apologize for the lag spikes. I do believe a enemy might have spawned. Nope, it's just a military mine layer that's just coming over in the distance. Back to where I just was through here and opening up that doorway. We then come to another doorway that then leads further up to another doorway but in this section we've got all of our stuff for your troops to get geared up and ready for combat so we've got a bunch of small little armory lockers or weapon racks even even more weapon racks around to here we then got a button 
that will toggle the lights on and off and around us and behind a large weapon rack to store a few more bits and bobs in. All the way around to here, some more armory lockers, and then got another little seat which we can use to deploy down our landing gear to bring the free camera all the way around to here once again. I think that's a good enough view. We can then press number three, and that should drop down all of our landing gears and we'll be ready to lock down onto the ground and deploy your troops from your elevators. So there we are with that. Coming out of that seat and turning all the way around another little cryopod just in case you need it. And a doorway down to here that will drop us all the way down to the floor that we were in not too long ago. And like I said, this ship is basically one gigantic maze. And well, during my little test video where we go around and check everything, I got the very, very lost. But coming through this doorway all the way around, we should be coming towards the end of the exploration of this ship, because we're now back at the very top floor. And then coming back through this doorway, we'll now head towards, towards the bridge, because I'm pretty sure we've just covered absolutely everything on the inside of this. So here we go, we've now got to find where that just was, through our medical bay all the way around. Back through this door, up. And we should have a lovely LCD screen telling us that the flight deck is behind us. And I think that is the final area to look at. Apart from the top secret room that you're supposed to go in and find that's very well hidden. Yes, this is just our small ship landing pad for you to dock up and get on inside. And coming back through all the way down, we now need to find it back where, where the bridge was. You could go insane trying to find the places in this ship. And here we are, I have found the doorway that leads to the bridge. I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure that I just made one gigantic loop through the ship. Because if I open up this doorway, this is the medical bay where we were just at. And the way to the bridge was through that door. I came out of that door, walked all the way around. Yes, we just come through here. And I've just came through the wrong area. God damn it. But anyway, through this doorway, all the way down. We'll now head towards the bridge, which should be through this doorway right here and all the way down. On my left and right hand side we've got some more doorways to go through which then lead us to other sections in the ship. There's another little turret and that'll lead us outside and we'll be able to get to a walkway which will then view the bridge at the front. Opening up this doorway once again and coming back through to where I just was we'll now get into the seat itself. So all the way around to here, a bunch of LCD screens telling us absolutely everything about the ship, our flight statistics, our power supply, our hydrogen, our ship integrity, and a doorway to go inside. And this, finally, is our bridge. Looking up, we've got an air vent to make sure we don't suffocate, a radar to detect any kind of enemies. On our left hand side and right hand side, a small control seat. And looking behind us, we've got some time blocks, which is for everything about the ship. Getting into this seat right here and bringing up the HUD, we've got two controls, which is going to be for our hangar bay for our torpedo launchers. On the opposite side, coming to here, we then got our custom galley guns to take manual control. So pressing number four and then pressing at number eight and nine, that's going to unlock our galley gun and allow us to move it all the way around. We can press number three to extend out our aiming reticle to get a better look at in the distance. And then pressing number two, we then fire all of our galley guns together. In fact, we're going to destroy our turrets. Look at how quickly it just shreds absolutely everything. It's absolutely insane the damage this thing can deal. But for the moment, we'll retract that, disable them, and we'll get into the main seat. So in the main seat, this is what we get looking all the way around us. We've got one fantastic view of what's coming up against us. And as for the hot bar, this is what we get. Coming to third person view and pressing number one, this is going to be for our thrusters all the way around the ship. Number two is going to be for our camera just above our bridge so we can get a much clearer view of what's coming up against us. Number three is going to be for our space thrusters where we turn off all the ones above us because we don't need them while on a planet, but we do need them in space, so it's always useful to have a toggle. Number four and number five is going to be for our landing gear to drop them all the way down, and then to retract them all the way back up. Number six is simply to lock and unlock them, with number nine being for manual control over our interior turret that sits right above our bridge for manual firepower. Coming to tab number two and pressing at number two, that's going to be for our docking connector at the front where we can then extend it all the way out, we can change the distance with 8 and 9, and we can press 3 to retract it back in, with number 1 to be the lock and unlock it. On tab number 3, this is all for our jump drives, where number 1 is where we can jump a nice distance, if I was to switch this back to a ship, there we go, and press number 1, we can jump 931 kilometers, which is quite respectable for a large ship. Tab number 5, 6 and 7, all being empty. 
Now I do believe I missed out one of the seats which would be to control the custom rocket turrets, but being we looked at the custom Gatling gun, you kind of get the idea of what they're about. So now what we can do is a quick little thruster test, then we're just slamming this into an asteroid, and that'll be that. So moving forwards, this is what we get. To reach maximum speed, it's going to take roughly 12 seconds, which is very nice for a large ship. Coming to a stop, however, from 100 meters per second, or even reversing to max speed, is going to take 18 seconds, which again is not too bad for a large ship. Moving left and right is going to take 19 seconds to reach maximum speed, moving up is only going to take 7 seconds, and moving down is going to take 16. So we've got quite a varying amount of numbers all the way around this ship, but they do seem to be within the same ballpark as each other. And then wheeling my mouse around, this is what we get. We've got one hell of a lot of weight on here, but it is quite fair because this is a large gunship, or even a large mine layer, depending on how you look at it. So yes, there's not too much you can do, there is one hell of a lot of gyroscopes on here to control it, but at the end of the day, it does suit this size of ship. So one final thing to do, of course, is to slam this straight into an asteroid, and that'll be that for the Potbelly Cluster Torpedo Printer. Hopefully I have covered everything about the ship, I think I did miss out this secret room that was underneath, where we need to come to a sudden stop, and of course to get out of the seat, come all the way around to whichever one controls the door, I think it was this one, we just open up the hangar bay for the moment, I'll bring the free camera all the way down, because this is how it reveals the secret area, we can now just get out of the seat, there we go, I'll just paste myself down here, and we'll then move all the way up to wherever that opened up. So we can access this without jetpack, which is by landing on this section right here. We come up to this doorway, where we're greeted by a dead engineer and a warhead. Turning around, we then got an LCD screen telling us, congratulations, you found the secret room, there's nothing in here. Then just accessing the backpack, we then see another congratulations. We're going to open this up. There we go, and it says, so you found the hidden room, huh? Bet you used spectator mode to find this. No? Well then, I must say you're quite the explorer. Did you have to use the jetpack? You know you can get in here without the jetpack, right? Just go stand on the bay doors, activate the opening sequence remotely, and then walk up to the edge of the innermost bay while the hinges are moving. Once the bay doors have fully opened, retract the bay door piston number one. Now you can jump right in and open the door. Of course you didn't need to read this, after all, you got in here, one way or another. So anyway, I've got this cool new rifle and Marv doesn't believe that it's incapable of penetrating my spacesuit's visor. Gonna prove him wrong and make him look like a total jerk, lol. Better do a test shot before I make sure that I can wear this shit-eating grin all the way to the security room. F you Marv. So there we go, with that, and of course there is our warhead that we can detonate a bit later. In fact, before we go back and crash into the asteroid, what we're going to do is just activate this. And we're going to arm the warhead. And here we go, we're now going to continue along towards the asteroid. And the creators wondering how I found it, it was when I was doing a inspection underneath to make sure everything was in tip top shape, nothing too broken or anything. I saw this little doorway and was, well, curious. But anyway, that is it for the 91 CTPV Potbelly Cluster Torpedo Printer. There will be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. I highly recommend you do because it is a fantastic looking ship. One hell of a lot of stuff going on there. Basically one giant maze on the interior. But the torpedoes are great fun to use. And here we go. Here is the asteroid right in front of us. The game is not liking this ship moving. I think there's too many moving parts for my computer to handle. And well, I would probably expect the game to crash. I thought it just crashed right there, but nope. It just throws up a little bit, and here we go, straight into the side. And that's going to do one hell of a lot of damage. There's a one hell of a lot of weight carrying this vehicle all the way across. And it looks like we just bounced away, and we destroyed the entire front. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.